there's a lot of talk about the comics and where they should be sold and, and kind of lamenting the loss of the newsstand. It's interesting because I think most people who complain about the newsstand and, and talk about it uh, were not really alive to enjoy it. Or, or maybe they were, they were young kids, didn't understand some of the complexities in the newsstand. Don't get me wrong. I think having comics more places is critical. The newsstand is an important piece, but it's, it's not as simple as just waving a magic wand and saying, let's put the comics there. That will fix everything. Um, but one person who definitely was alive during this time period is, is Jerry Conway. And Jerry Conway has a solution. He's got an idea for how to solve uh, this, this comic problem, this, this mess. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, at Jerry Conway, uh, of course, the legend in this industry, did a lot of, uh, I mean, it touched not everything, but almost everything, a lot of everything. Um, he he uh, took to Twitter to talk about problems in the comic industry. Now, what's interesting here, just as an aside, is two, three years ago, uh, a guy named Doug Ernst was saying these same things. He was pointing out these same problems. And at the time, Doug Ernst was uh, billed a crazy lunatic uh, who hated hated comics and people and, and everything else. But he was saying the same things. And a lot of people did two or three years ago when they were described as kooks. People would uh, blast up graphs showing how the comic industry was growing at a record pace and everything was perfect and wonderful and, and uh, shut up, you know, dumb fans. But Today, Jerry Conway uh, goes into many of the same points, um, basically stating the comic book publishing is in serious trouble with a business model that almost literally has no future. Uh, aside, just stop using literally, people. You guys, it, it, people don't know what it uh, what it means. So, so just so, so, so just stop using literally. Literally, you're using it wrong. Literally. Uh, anyway, um, it, it, the, yet I, I, I'm sorry. We'll come in the comments. We'll say you're picking on him for saying literally. I, he's not. Yeah, screw it. Whatever you want to say. Yet, comic books are a source of intellectual property for exploitation, all sorts of popular media, and have never uh, have greater potential. Okay, so um, we've said this on this channel. I've said this many, many times. Um, it's I'm, I'm glad that more people in the industry are starting to agree with me. Hey, that's awesome. Um, the comic does have a problem, but... In many cases, people look at it as very binary. They look at it as, hey, something worked before. It's not working as well now. We have to go back. We have to go back to the before. And like you may have heard on this channel, and, and like I believe, um, the, you know, people who say we have to go back um, are wrong. That would fail. You can't go back. You, uh, the world is constantly evolving and moving forward. You should learn from the past. You should certainly bring things back from the past if they make sense in the current business climate. But the reality is what is happening today is not working. What happened in the 80s would not work in 2020. It would not. Um, and, and we'll get into kind of back to uh, Gary Conway here in a, in a, in a moment. But... Um, and by the way, before somebody tells me to pronounce it, I know Jerry Conway. I'm talking quick. It is Jerry. If you listen closely, I'm not calling him Gary Conway. It's Jerry. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, I do appreciate people uh, coming in. But but please do understand when I pronounce things goofy. Um, in many cases, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm playing with you. Uh, that that is what's happening. Just just saying. Um, it, I'm entertaining myself. So. Jerry Conway says this. He says, I would cancel every existing superhero comic book and publish a limited new line for middle grade readership, simplify characters and storylines, and eliminate every event that requires more than passing familiarity with the basic simplified continuity. 10 to 15 titles. For existing readers, I'd offer a separate higher priced graphic novel line with whatever expanded adult storyline creators and readers want to explore. But this would be separate, not monthly, not the mainstream. And I do everything possible to get monthly comics into supermarkets and movie theaters and Walmart and Target and Costco and offer subscription services through Amazon. Pursue every alternate distribution avenue possible. Uh, the present course taken by the major publishers is a dead end. They're pursuing the wrong readership. There's a bigger audience out there. We just have to welcome them. 
Okay, so on, on the surface, there's some things that are correct here, but there's also some things that are terribly, terribly wrong. And kind of breaking them down piece by piece, there's a lot in there that is kind of what I would call anecdotal uh, knowledge or, or kind of buzzword type statements, but they're not, they're not accurate. So first off, um, if you cancel every existing superhero book and publish a limited new line for middle grade readership, you're making one massive assumption that I don't think is true. And that is that the, the new uh, line that you would publish would immediately be as popular as the current line. Now, the current line of the big two is diminishing in sales, but still pulling in uh, quite a bit of money. It's still creating IP. It's still generating profit. It's not creating a massive profit. It's not creating a great profit. It's arguably a business model that is not sustainable for a local comic shop, but it is producing money. Now, if you actually go and look at the YA audience, if you look at the graphic novels being published for this group, you have a couple massive success stories. You have Babysitter Club, you have Raina Tellmiger's work, you have Dav Pilkey's stuff. We've talked about it before. Those are great names and good on them that they're, they're very successful. You also have roughly 400 to 500 no-name unknown novels that are going out selling nothing and dying on the shelf. There is a far steeper cliff between what is successful and what is not. There's it, people, and this is the big trap that a lot of people get into, and, and Jerry Conway is getting into it here, that if Marvel and DC canceled everything, they, they basically turned the revenue spigot off. They shut off all those comics and they said, okay, we don't want you anymore. Goodbye, old audience. And they went for this new audience, they would be successful. Unfortunately, there is no guarantee that they would. In fact, there's at least a little bit of evidence to suggest they wouldn't. When IDW has made comics for a younger audience, when Marvel and DC have dipped their toes into this water, it typically hasn't been successful. Now, granted, some of these comics for YA uh, morph and change the characters so much that they're unrecognizable and the heart of what makes them popular disappears as well. People think that in order to appeal to the new audience, they have to dump all continuity and in the process, they go ahead and they insert new things that they think kids will like or maybe that they just want to. They hire YA audiences and you get, you, you, you just, or, or authors and you get very different things. They lose the heart and the soul of these books. If the major publishers canceled all existing titles and basically published this new line, they run a, a higher than average chance that they would fail. Who would be leading this initiative? Who would be kicking this stuff off? Would it be training the existing writers in your stable to create this new line? And are the editors the same? Or is Jordan White going to uh, suddenly manage a YA a line of comics is is he qualified to do that does he understand that business is this something he would do um in, in the part that is not said is in addition if you were to go this route in addition to canceling every existing superhero comic book you would also need to cancel ie fire uh joe casada jim lee everybody at the management level and at the editorial level who doesn't know how to work with this new audience that that wouldn't that I mean, are you prepared to do that? You could do that. But then basically you are starting over in a race against Scholastic and Scholastic is kicking your ass right now. And you are not you're not starting at this, the same place. They're way ahead of you. You've got to catch up. And that's going to be incredibly difficult unless Marvel or DC wants to reach into their pockets and basically hire Raina Telmiger, you know, get her out of her scholastic contract and bring her, you know, poach that talent. That's that's the only way you're going to get a jump start on being able to compete. Otherwise, you're going to have to slowly build this line. If you cancel all of your existing comic books in order to slowly build this line, you're cutting all your revenue off to zero, as well as your licensing, your IP possibilities, and you're starting new. That would be stupid, just plain stupid. Then, um, you know, he goes into eliminate every event that requires more than passing familiarity with basic simplified continuity, 10 to 15 titles. As I talked about on Thinking Critical with Wes and other places, is that the problem? People in the comic industry have a very weird view of continuity. They, I don't think they fully understand what it means. They get hung up on things like, 
hey, uh, how could Iron Man have possibly, uh, you know, invented the armor back in Vietnam? How could uh, the Fantastic Four have been in the Cold War uh, trying to to win the space race? How how this stuff doesn't work? You have to, you know, we have to make it more modern. But the thing is, kids in that audience they don't care about that. They don't think about it. You look at, uh, you know, you look at stuff with, uh, I mean, like I've mentioned before, my kids are watching One Piece. Um, there's something called, uh, you know, it, it, basically, it's a phone that looks like a snail. No, don't, you'll have to go watch this on YouTube. But, but anyway, there's, at, at times, there's a corded phone. Um, obviously, I don't have a corded phone in my house now. Uh, my kids are growing up having never seen a rotary dial phone. They see this stuff on cartoons. It doesn't phase them. They'll say, hey, what's that? And I say, oh, that's what phones used to look like. And they're like, okay. It, it, it doesn't, it's not a problem. It's not a barrier. They love that show. If you look at the super successful stuff with manga, and I might add YA, with all of the successful properties that Netflix and Amazon are doing around nostalgia, um, you know, what, is Stranger Things not a viable show because people can't parse this, this crazy 80s continuity? No, people roll with it. But in the comic industry, people are obsessed with this idea of this doesn't make any sense. People are going to not understand how Iron Man isn't aging. I mean, he'd be 90 by now. Nobody thinks that way. And the reason they don't think that way is because you've got a guy flying around in a, in a robot suit fighting people made out of you know living energy. They're not stopping to wonder about when his birthday is. That is not a problem. Yet the comic industry is obsessed with that. You don't need to blow up continuity. You need to make titles accessible. You need to make the story make sense. Guess what? Um, if, if your comic is dense and overly complicated with continuity, then the story sucks. If the story is good, people roll with continuity. It comes down to the story. Stop creating this continuity boogeyman that we all have to worry about. It, it's not nearly the factor people think it is. Conway, continuing, he says, for existing readers, I offer a separate higher price graphic novel line for whatever expanded adult storyline creators and readers want to explore, but this would be separate, not monthly, not the mainstream. That sounds nice, but your current audience is your mainstream. If you want to go chase a new audience, you can't, you know, bail on the existing one and just say, screw it, we're going over here. You can certainly do separate higher price graphic novel line. That, that may be. Is that, is that the lesson people are learning from crowdfunding and from the fact that you know, Ethan Van Skyver can sell Cyberfrog and, and make a bunch of money. Is, is that the lesson people are learning? Because that's, that's not the lesson of the industry. There are, you know, make, make your higher price graphic novel line, you know, go nuts. But there's plenty of other places all over the, the place that, that offers monthly. And by the way, you know, here's, here's an interesting thing. You can certainly take this approach. You're very confident and secure in it. Scholastic is looking at two things. One, they're looking at monthly because they also want subscription revenue. And two, they're looking to expand into an older audience because they want to grow their bubble. They want to grow with their audience that they've collected at a young age. They're growing in. So the, wrong, the, the absolute wrong answer is to abandon the ground you already have. That would be stupid. Finally, we get into, I do everything possible to get monthly comics into supermarkets and movie theaters and Walmart, Target, Costco. So half of this is right. You should get comics more places. I think relying only on the local comic shop, it's weird that people, you know, have started to blame the local comic shop as a trap. I mean, the comic publishers were thrilled to basically not have to deal with returnability. So, you know, I mean, they, they, they went into this. Uh, it, it was good for them. That, uh, that, that just, you know, I'm just saying. Um, you should get into more places, but understand that the newsstand of 2020 is not the newsstand of 1985. Parents do not let their kids go to the magazine area in a supermarket and just sit there on the floor while they shop. We're worried about somebody, you know, kidnapping the kid. We're worried that, you know, that, that just doesn't happen. And in this pandemic that's currently going on, nobody's just leaving their kids one place to kind of, you know, be exposed to comics. Um, if you're going to get them into all these places, you're going to have to make it compelling. Walmart puts the comics kind of hidden in an area. They're not, they're not well displayed and they're not well displayed because they don't make nearly the money that other items do. There's more valuable shelf space at Walmart. In movie theaters, people are, are quickly trying to get from ticket into theater. And that's assuming they go back to the theater at all. 
this is an area where if you're going to chase kind of bigger distribution, you have to look other places. Now, the idea about a subscription to our service through Amazon is a good one because a lot of people are using that and that would be smart. But Costco? No. Uh, one, Costco is not going to have a, you know, a, a comic rack there. You can certainly put your graphic novels there and, and you do today have graphic novels in a little book pile at Costco. But Walmart, Target, and movie theaters, and especially supermarkets, are not the same. This is where I've had this argument many times with people. The newsstand of 1985 is not the newsstand of 2020. You know, I, I had a fierce argument with somebody like comic books need to get back into gas stations. Very few people go into the gas station anymore. Very few. They pay at the pump. So getting into the gas station is not going to generate what you think it's going to generate. You have to look at where people are going to find comics and you need to get them there. I, I think that, you know, online subscription services is very important, but you're going to have to find new areas to find people. You can't just assume that that market that existed before still exists today. The final comment, the present course taken by major publishers is a dead end. They're pursuing the wrong readership. No, they're pursuing the readership they have. This hatred that is being built up of the current market is, uh, is sick to be honest. Uh, people are obsessively thinking that the people currently buying comics are the wrong people, which is a absolutely baffling, and that is the self-destructive dead-end way of thinking, that the people currently giving you money are somehow the wrong people. They're bad people. They need to go away in favor of this new audience that you don't have. The giant wake-up call for the comic industry is if they go head-to-head -head with Scholastic for the YA audience, they're going to get their ass handed to them. This is not a place where you're competitive right now. So don't, don't abandon your current readership in favor of something you don't have. Go find that readership, go grow it, and any sensible business people will tell you that if you do get that other audience, if you do start to get those customers, celebrate because now you've got two groups. You don't say, I can only have one or the other. That's very small, very limited thinking. This is thinking by people who do not have business degrees, who don't think about long-term success of comics. Comics is, is uh, there's a lot of binary thinkers in comics. People are like, well, it must be A or it must be B. And unfortunately, if you're wrong about both counts, then you just go around in a circle. There is a bigger audience out there. You're absolutely right. You do need to welcome them. You need to welcome them with a compelling product that they would like. But I would argue very few people working in comics today, meaning the big two, understand that new audience, understand how to get them. And frankly, I mean, you know, and I definitely think this is the problem at Marvel. Their ego is so high that they believe they already know how to talk to these people and they haven't a clue. If you talk to Marvel, you go to cons, you go to other places um, where you interact with some of these people from time to time. I and mean, I'm not talking about the creators now. I'm talking about the management. You run into a massive ego problem. You have people who are going to tell you how it is. And they won't listen to advice. They won't pay. They, they will not hear other comments and other suggestions. It's they, They're right. And that thinking is going to drive them right off the cliff. You're right, there's a bigger audience out there and it's gonna take a different team to go get them. Certainly a different team that exists today. Um, you know, the, the comic industry does need to change. It needs to evolve and it needs to grow. But people need to take stock of what's working today and what's not and stop making these, these crazy statements around blowing everything up in order to get the new thing. Nobody in any position of power with any intelligence would allow that to happen. So. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, what do you think? Um, let me know what you think of my thoughts, where you agree, where you disagree. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Most importantly, though, thanks for listening.